In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the transferor's basis when you have a Section 351 transaction. So a quick review, the three requirements of Section 351 are that the transferors are transferring property in exchange for a corporation's stock, and then they have control of the corporation immediately afterwards. So let's jump into an example. Let's say again that you own a Ferris wheel and that the adjusted basis or the cost of that Ferris wheel was $100,000, but now the fair market value of the Ferris wheel is $975,000. So you have a friend named Bozo the Clown, and Bozo owns 100%, all, all 20 shares of a corporation called Seven Flags Amusement Park, and what you're doing is you're going to transfer your Ferris wheel to the corporation, to Bozo's corporation, and now what Bozo's Corporation Seven Flags is going to give you in exchange is it's going to give you 80 shares. Uh, it's going to give you 80 shares of, of stock, just like Bozo's stock, common voting shares. And those shares have a fair market value of 972,000, let's say. But you're going to get the 80 shares, but you're going to get some things other than those shares. Uh, you're going to get $2,000 cash. Right, so you're going to get some cash from the Seven Flags Amusement Park, and you're going to get $1,000 of clown shoes. Let's say that they have some clown shoes laying around, and that's the fair market value of the clown shoes. Right, So we call, we call these things boot. If you remember from our video on boot, this is property you're receiving other than the stock in the corporation. Right, So for it to be Section 351, you're transferring property, a Ferris wheel. In exchange for corporation stock, you're getting 80 shares, and then you own 80% or more, the transferors own 80% or more afterwards, right? You own, you have 80 shares out of 100, 80 out of 100, so this will qualify as a Section 351 transaction. But you're receiving something other than the corporation stock. You're getting this boot, this other property, the $2,000 cash, and then the $1,000 valued clown shoes. And so those are going to become relevant when we calculate your basis in the stock that you're receiving, right? These 80 shares. We say, well, what is your basis and why is that important? Because what if you turned around the next day and sold these 80 shares? We're not we need to figure out how to calculate the gain or loss. So we need to know what the basis is, the basis of these 80 shares. And so the boot is going to be relevant because the boot in this case is going to trigger a gain. So let's think about it. So if we go back to our boot rule and we figure, well, how do we have, do we have a recognized gain? How much is it? There's going to be a recognized gain if, and we look at the lesser of, excuse me, the transfer's realized gain or the fair market value of the boot received, right? So the transfer's realized gain, if we take a look, you, you basically got $875,000. So we've got $875,000 here, right? There's an $875,000 difference. And so we've got $875,000 is the real, realized gain. It's not recognized, realized. And then the fair market value of the boot received. So we have two types of boot here. We've got cash and we've got clown shoes. So the fair market value of the clown shoes is 1,000. The fair market value of cash is just the cash, 2,000. So 3,000, if we add those together, that's the fair market value of the boot received, right? So now what we have happening here is we're going to look at these two numbers and say which is lower, and it's going to be the $3,000. So we're going to have recognized gain of $3,000, and that is going to come into play when we are calculating your basis in the stock received, your basis in those 80 shares. We need to use these numbers now. So we're going to look at the adjusted basis of the property transferred to the corporation, and if you remember, that was $100,000. I don't want to scroll up because I, I don't want to give you vertigo, but let's let's say that's a hundred thousand dollars. It was the cost of the Ferris wheel was a hundred thousand, and it had a different fair market value. But the adjusted basis of the property that you transferred that Ferris wheel was a hundred thousand dollars. Now we're going to add we're going to add any gain that you recognized as the transferor, and we know we just calculated you calculate th you recognize three thousand dollars gain because of the boot you received right we calculate that so you get three thousand so we're going to add three thousand dollars okay now we're going to subtract we're going to subtract the fair market value of boot you received well you received those thousand dollar clown shoes and so those thousand dollar clown shoes are going to be subtracted but then also also we're going to have to subtract 
any cash that you receive from the corporation, right? So now you've received two thousand dollars cash. Now, if you want it, this cash is boot too, right? So realistically, you could put it all on one line where you have minus three thousand dollars. It, it's up to you, but I just wanted to separate it out. You might see it this way in, in a tax textbook. So minus a thousand, minus two thousand, or you just put minus three thousand and net it together into one line. But now it also, if you had any liabilities assumed by the corporation, let's say you had some debt associated with the Ferris wheel or something, that would be subtracted as well. Uh, so, but we don't have any of that in this case, so that's just gonna be zero. And then now we, we put all that together and that's going to tell us, that's gonna tell us our adjusted basis in the stock that was received, those 80 shares, right? Those 80 shares of stock in the Seven Flags Corporation is gonna tell you your basis. So 100,000 plus 3,000 minus 1,000 and minus 2,000 is going to give us $100,000. So this is going to be your basis. This is the basis in those 80 shares. Now, let's think about something here. So we said that the fair market value, the fair market value of the, the 80 shares that you receive was $972,000, right? So it was $972,000. So let's say that you instantly, after you did this transaction, let's say that you sell Let's say you sell all 80 shares for the fair market value of $972,000, right? I want to I want to show you something about how the tax deferral works under Section 351 and why this is not tax forgiveness; it's tax deferral. So if you immediately sold all 80 shares after this transaction for the fair market value of $972,000. Then we say, well, we've got to subtract their basis, right? That's why we calculate the basis is we want to know if what's the gain or loss if we sell the stock. And so we know that the basis is $100,000 because that's what we spent all that time uh, calculating. So I'll just put A, B, adjusted basis, and that's, that's $100,000, right? And we're, we're going to subtract that. So I'll put it in parentheses there so you know it's being uh, taken out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say this is – 972 minus 100,000, that's $872,000. That's $872,000. And that would be a recognized gain. Again, this is not part of the Section 351 transaction. This is if after the Section 351 transaction was done, you said, all right, I'm going to turn around and sell these shares in, in seven flags. You are going to have an $872,000 gain. Now, if you go, if we go back to our original property. So we were transferring a Ferris wheel, the cost of 100,000 and fair market value eight, uh, 975. So really that property had appreciated by 875,000. Now, do we get tax forgiveness on that 875 by doing this transaction? No, because remember when we did the transaction, we recognized $3,000 of gain from boot, right? So we recognized $3,000. And then we said, hypothetically, after the Section 351, if you sold all 80 shares, you would have a tax bill of 872, 872,000. And if you add those two together, 872 plus three, that gives you 875. So by doing this Section 351 transaction, you are not getting tax forgiveness. It's not that you will never be taxed on that 875 increase in the, because this appreciated property. It's just tax deferral.